Hello everyone and welcome back to Newegg TV. My name is Paul and today I'm going to be doing an unboxing, well not necessarily an unboxing, but I will be doing an overview as well as some quick benchmarks on this new hybrid drive from Seagate, also known as an SSHD or solid state hybrid drive. This one's known simply as the Laptop Thin SSHD. So to give you guys a better idea of what a solid state hybrid drive is, I have both of the elements of it here in, in their individual forms. Now this one happens to be a mechanical hard drive, and uh, don't worry, it's dead. Uh, you should never open up a mechanical hard drive because they are hermetically sealed inside. Uh, but a mechanical hard drive inside has rotating platter platters that spin around like that very, very fast, and it's got a drive read write head that moves out over the surface of those platters and uh, reads the data off of them, which is magnetically stored um, in tons of little bits of data across the plotters themselves. So uh, the Seagate SS, uh, SSHD right over there has a mechanical storage built into it, but it also has uh, what this is also kind of part of. This is a SSD, or just a straight SSD by itself, um, and you might notice no moving parts on this particular guy. I've got some NAND flash in there, which is solid state memory, hence the name solid state. Uh, a controller as well to help uh, store the da data and manage the storage configuration. Now what the uh, Seagate laptop thin SSHD has done right here is sort of integrated both elements of that. Now the uh, bonuses that you get are the, the positive elements of a mechanical hard drive for example is you get more storage. Uh, there's simply much higher capacities available for much lower prices when it comes to mechanical hard drives. They also have a long uh, lifespan and they're very well known for their reliability whether you're talking about a laptop 3.5 inch drive or a 2.5 inch drive like this one which is generally geared more towards uh, a, a laptop or um, a use in other smaller form factor um, considerations. And I think when I said 3.5 inch, I might have said laptop. I meant to say desktop for 3.5 inch. Okay. Uh, apart from that though, it also has the integrated NAND flash and uh, the solid state storage is uh, known for being extremely fast. So what you have here is uh, most of the bulk of your storage which is going to be stored on the spinning platters in there. And then you'll also have that uh, NAND flash which is also integrated. You happen to get 8 gigs uh, integrated. It's MLC NAND flash memory and your hot data or data that's being uh, cached or set aside to write onto the platters uh, is written to that NAND flash first, which uh, gives you a much, much faster response time. This drive also has intelligence built into it so that as you use the drive, so for instance doing stuff like loading up your operating system, there's going to be a specific set of files that it accesses each time. Or if you load up uh, one of your favorite programs, there's going to be specific files that it loads up each time. It will take those files that it finds that you're accessing frequently, it will store that on the NAND uh, as well as a mechanical drive, and then when it goes to access that, it will access it off of the NAND, which is going to be much, much faster. So it's a great way to hybridize both of those drives that I showed you to give you kind of the, uh, the best of both worlds so you get the really fast response time, uh, really fast, uh, say, Windows boot times, for example. Um, Seagate has listed in the product specs for this drive that with Windows 8 and a properly configured system, you can have boot times of 10 seconds or less. Uh, and then you also, of course, have the uh, mass storage, so 500 gigs in this drive, which uh, if you want to go ahead and compare this to a 500 gigabyte or more uh, solid state drive, you'll find those are still quite expensive when compared to something like this. But apart from that, uh, this drive is meant for laptops, hence the name laptop, then SSHD, but of course it would still be suitable in a desktop configuration. Um, and then you also have the option of going with other solutions for it, such as uh, integrating, uh, you could drop something like this into an external drive, for example, and give yourself a little bit of a fast portable storage. Uh, it is the 2.5 inch drive form factor, so if your laptop supports that form factor, uh, you should be able to fit it in there. Do bear in mind that there is something known as Z height, or the vertical height of the drive. This particular drive is seven millimeters tall, so it should fit. If your laptop supports 2.5 inch drives, that are seven millimeters tall. I apologize for the mix of metric and imperial measurement systems there. That wasn't my fault, but uh, so, so, it, uh, so it is in the computing world. You tend to use a little bit of both. Apart from that, you have your connectors right here at the end. So you're going to have a power connector right there. That's your standard serial ATA power. And a data connector right there. That is for the data transfer between your system and the drive itself. And next up, to give you guys a little bit better idea of uh, how this drive's performance will improve over time as you give it more data to cache, uh, I have some benchmarks to show you. So here's some benchmark screen caps. And um, first off, just so you guys know what system we currently had this installed in when we were doing the benchmarks, it's an Intel Core i5-3570K processor-based system. It's on an Asus Maximus 5 gene motherboard. That's uh, the Z77 chipset, Ivy Bridge processor, uh, and our memory is running at 2133. 
And uh, yeah, that's about it as far as system configuration. Now, um, we just ran a couple tests on this. Now, first, the first test is known as Crystal Bismarck. And here's actually an example of how the SSD caching feature uh, is, is potentially not going to work in certain situations. And that's simply because uh, Crystal Bismarck is a synthetic test that's made for testing hard drives and SSDs. And every time you run this test, it generates random data. Um, because the data is random, if you run the test more than once, the drive's not necessarily going to be able to duplicate or recall that data right away. So you'll notice uh, if you look at the sequential reads and write times, which are uh, coming in at 10 or, 10 or 11 megabytes per second uh, faster than Seagate's actually listening for this drive, which is pretty nice. Uh, you'll notice uh, 110, 111 right there. Uh, we're going to stay within about the same 3% uh, margin of error the whole time. So drop down to 99 for that test, back up to 105 for this test. All, uh, with, again, within the same uh, margin of error for these tests. And it uh, looks like Steve also ran it in. I should mention Steve ran these benchmarks. I'm just reporting them to you. He did a great job. He's also running the camera right now, also doing a great job. OK. Uh, we, he also ran it in, uh, in incompressible mode. Uh, so this is the standard method using incompressible data. Um, and again, you can see pretty much the same results right there. Here is a test uh, from PCMark. So PCMark 7 is a sort of a full system suite. Uh, we'll test your entire system. Uh, all we're currently worried about with this particular test is the secondary storage score because uh, this drive was plugged in as an, ex or a as an additional storage drive in addition to the operating system drive. Now you'll notice uh, the sort of baseline score for the original test was 3008. And you'll notice uh, there's actually four runs of this, and I'm going to jump through them, but you'll notice that the score will improve each time, and that's simply because the drive has been caching data, and it's been able to improve its response time um, to this test calling for data because it's got that data saved in the NAND flash rather than on the spinning mechanical disks. Now, uh, over on the right side here, we can see the breakdown of the entire secondary score storage score suite. Um, so uh, pay, pay close attention to these numbers here because you're going to see them jump up quite a bit. Specifically, I want to say the media center, music, and uh, application starting. So uh, for instance, starting applications, iteration 1, 3.86. We jump to the next test. It jumped up to 16.66, which is a pretty significant improvement. Also, our overall score went from just over 3,000 to 3,715. Again, another nice bump. And uh, actually, we can see that all of these numbers jumped. If we go to test 1, we saw 3, 11, 14, 9, 5, 10, and 11. Test 2 was 16, 17, and then 12s across the board. That's megabytes per second. And again, this is simulating uh, open, opening a game and opening an application that you might use uh, frequently as well. And then going down the line, you're going to see a pretty big boost uh, right away um, as it caches the data um, for the first time. Our score will continue to climb, though, so up to 3,729 there. And we saw uh, some more small bumps in some of the detailed scores over here. Uh, the third test jumped to the score up to 3,745. Again, some smaller uh, jumps there in some of the tests over on the right side, but uh, slowing down a little bit because um, once you hit the speed that the uh, NAND can do, uh, you can't go much beyond that. And uh, oh, I guess that was actually the fourth run. So the, the uh, top score was 3,745. And again, um, nice jumps in all of these storage scores over here on the right as we move from test to test and sort of running the same test over and over again. And that is going to wrap it up for this video, guys. Once again, we've been taking a closer look at the new Seagate Laptop Thin SSHD or Solid State Hybrid Drive. I did want to mention, since we've been taking a look at the 500 gigabyte 7 millimeter tall version right here, it's also available in a 1 terabyte version that is 9.5 millimeters tall, so a little bit thicker. So uh, bear that in mind if you're looking into that particular drive for a notebook application. Uh, those drives are available as bare drives, and then there's also some kits available with a 500 gig, a 750 gig, and a 1 terabyte. Uh, versions also available, so keep your eye out for all of those if you're looking for a solid state hybrid drive from Seagate. I'm Paul with Newegg TV, and if you enjoyed this video or found it useful, you should maybe hit the like button, which is right down there in the lower left hand corner. And uh, thanks for watching. We'll see you all next time.